Russia boasts that it is making gains in Kursk and within Ukraine. However, that belies the fact that Russia is, in fact, losing incredible quantities of soldiers. At this point, signing up to join the Russian army is signing one's own death sentence, says Jake Bro, according to the Kiev Post. Jake Bro, who is well known to those who follow Ukraine's war against Russian aggression for his dynamic, interesting and accurate analysis of what is transpiring in Russia's war against Ukraine. Through his battlefield map updates and articulate explanations, the war commentator has developed a strong following that regularly checks in to see what he thinks will happen next. Bro, in this interview with Kyiv Post, explains what internal pressures Russia is now facing that could well lead the world's largest country to a brutal defeat. Bro gives his candid analysis about what outcome the Kremlin is hoping to see following this November's presidential election in the United States and expresses why he is a strong supporter of Vice President Kamala Harris, despite the arguments that some Ukraine supporters who back Trump make to argue that the former president would do a better job of helping Ukraine to win. Formerly, Bro was a nuclear and missile operations officer in the United States Air Force for six years, where he was in charge of the operations, maintenance and security of the Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System. Currently, Bro is a commentator on the war in support of Ukraine and operates a YouTube channel. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded. The staggering death toll, estimated to be 10 times higher than Soviet losses during the war in Afghanistan, is difficult to verify but is consistent with the independent open source reports. Using official reports, online obituaries on social media and images of tombstones, the BBC Russian service with the independent website MediaZona have identified the names of 75,000 dead Russians. They estimate the real tally to be between 113,000 to 160,000 deaths. We've seen a significant increase over the past six months, said a spokesperson at MediaZona. There's a lot of crazy headlines, especially concerning the arrival of these 10,000 or so North Koreans. But I think that uh, Putin has given a hard deadline to his generals. And unlike previous deadlines that they've all failed to meet, this one might not be elastic. And the reason why is I think Putin is trying to retake this territory in Kursk prior to Donald Trump taking office on January 20th. There will be talks. There will be negotiations. I'm not saying they're going to be successful. We don't know what Trump's plan really is. I, I, I honestly think he doesn't have a plan. He's coming up with it now. But Putin doesn't want to talk about Kursk. He doesn't want to talk about Ukraine giving back territory in Russia in exchange for anything else. That is a position to negotiate from weakness, not from strength. This is not what the Russians want. So at the moment, casualties are going insane on the battlefield. Just yesterday, uh, the estimated casualty report for the Russian forces was almost 2,000 soldiers killed, captured, or wounded in a single day. This doesn't feel like progress for the Russians. They're panicking about this chunk of the territory, about 1,000 square kilometers, and they want to pretend like this never happened. The Russian film company Mosfilm has donated 50 pieces of military equipment stored in warehouses to the needs of the Russian occupation forces. The statement was made by Mosfilm CEO Karen Shaknazarov during a meeting with Vladimir Putin in the Kremlin. He detailed that in 2023, the film company handed over 28 T-55 tanks, 8 PT-76 amphibious light tanks, 6 armoured personnel carriers and 8 tractors to the Russian armed forces. The equipment was used as a prop for filming movies and TV shows and also used as entertainment for tourists. It was stored at the Moss Film facility in the town of Krasnoznamensk, near Moscow. It is worth noting that as of today, PT-76 amphibious light tanks have not been spotted in the combat zone, but given the growing shortage of armoured vehicles in the Russian armed forces and the decommissioning of other outdated armoured vehicles, such as the BTR-50, this is quite possible, according to Militani. The Russian army is actively using Soviet T-55 stroke T-54 medium tanks in combat operations against the armed forces of Ukraine as artillery, fire support vehicles and infantry support. 
It should be reminded that the return of T-54 and T-55 tanks to service for the Russian army was announced in March 2023. At that time, the conflict intelligence team published photos of a train with these tanks heading from the far eastern part of Russia. According to SIT, this echelon departed from the city of Arseniev, which houses the 1,295th Central Tank Reserve and Storage Base. According to the Oryx Osint service, the Russians lost at least 13 T-55 stroke T-54 tanks of various modifications during the fighting. The Soviet T-54 and T-55 tanks are commonly referred to under two indexes as two different models, but in fact, they are part of the same line of combat vehicles. These tanks were constantly modernized and had design changes while conceptually remaining the same tank. The T-54 stroke T-55 can be distinguished from the later T-62 by a characteristic gap between the front first and second support rollers. Other distinctive features include the muzzle compensator at the end of the D-10T gun barrel and the specific convex radiator cap on the turret roof. Currently, there are three armored vehicle repair plants in Russia, but only one of them specializes in repairing vehicles such as the T-55 and the T-62. This is the 103rd armored repair plant, so the vehicles will be delivered there. The key drawbacks of the T-54 and T-55 are the critically low level of protection, lack of range finders and ballistic computers, primitive sites, and an inadequate gun stabilization system. Last year, Mosfilm Studio gave the Russian army 28 T-55 and 8 PT-76 tanks, as well as other military equipment. Mosfilm CEO Karen Shanazarov said this during a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to him, the equipment was stored in the military technical base of the film studio. Russian forces heavily rely on repaired tanks and armored vehicles pulled from storage to replace their losses in equipment. However, likely, Russia will not be able to sustain these losses in the long term, reports the US Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The report cites Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies expert Viktor Kevlyuk, who noted that Russian forces continue to produce and repair about 150 to 160 new tanks per month, approximately 1,920 tanks annually. This roughly matches the current rate of replacing Russian tank losses. According to the Dutch open source project Oryx, Russian forces have lost around 3,558 tanks since the beginning of the full-scale invasion in 2022. Kevlyuk also mentioned that about 30% of all Russian tanks produced in a year, around 567 out of 1,344, are newly manufactured, while the remaining 70% are pulled from storage. He pointed out that, based on recent British intelligence estimates, if Russia continues to withdraw tanks and armored vehicles from storage at the current rate, its stockpiles could be exhausted by autumn 2025. The British International Institute for Strategic Studies in February 2024 estimated that Russian forces could likely endure up to 3,000 annual losses of military vehicles over the next two to three years, reactivating stored equipment. Ukrainian military observer Kostyantin Mashovets had earlier estimated that Russia's defense industry could produce around 250 to 300 new tanks and repair another 250 to 300 annually. Western analysts report that Russia has decommissioned weapons accumulated during the Soviet era, but up to 70% of old tanks have not been moved and the rest have been refurbished and passed off as new. The Russians are also removing artillery barrels from old equipment and installing them on self-propelled howitzers. If this continues, Russia will reach a critical point of depletion in 2025. The much-vaunted Russian offensive against Kharkiv in the north that started in May is fizzling out. Its advances elsewhere along the line, especially in the Donbass region, have been both strategically trivial and achieved only at huge cost. The question now is less whether Ukraine can stay in the fight and more how long can Russia maintain its current tempo of operations. The key issue is not manpower. Russia seems able to go on finding another 25,000 or so 
soldiers each month to maintain numbers at the front of around 470,000, although it is paying more for them. Production of missiles to strike Ukrainian infrastructure is also surging, 